Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to another live stream. My name's Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and I like to go as live as often as possible to share all the wonderful things about whiskey, about the journey of flavor, about great single cask whiskey, or indeed tonight about the advent calendar. Now, I mentioned that, well, first of all, let me just clear one thing up here. I uh, This was supposed to be at 7.30, uh, and then I changed it to 8 o'clock. I'm back at 7.30-ish, 7.38. Uh, a meeting ran over time. That happens, and I thought it was going to go even longer. It didn't, which is great because uh, meetings at 7 o'clock at night, uh, you know, who, who wants a meeting at 7? Well, I mean, you might. You might be one of those people that likes meetings later in the day or you're one of those people that likes meetings at 7 a.m. Either way, uh, I've missed a few days of the advent calendar. I have we Andrew Durbage, our seller master, our amazing New South Wales state manager. Andrew, shout out as always. But uh, he and I hosted the most amazing basic uh, whiskey and chocolate pairing evening last Friday night. If you missed that, even if you didn't get the chocolate pack, well worth streaming into just to see how flavor explosions could work on camera. How that happens and what happens actually is quite surprising. Uh, however, tonight is all about, not that because we've done that, which is re was really exciting. Now it's about just tasting some of the drams that I missed out, that I forgot about, not forgot about, but just time got away from me and I was a few days out. Evening, Darren Howie, good to see you. Evening, James Finnegan, good to see you. Everyone that always love tuning, pe people love tuning in. I love people tuning in. Uh, and tonight it's all about the advent calendar and just tasting... I've got five to catch up on, as the photo of this uh, stream would have suggested. However, I'm not going to get through all five tonight. I'm not in the mood to drink five full drams tonight. However, I will start with one right now. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to start with... There's a 26.149 Eland Goop Coop Tat. I'm not being able to say that. I'm going to be able to say that correctly. Uh, Eland, as in Highland, uh, Coup d'etat. There you go. I got it right that time. <laughs> so this is an eight-year-old in the... This is an eight-year-old in the oily and coastal profile. So I'm going to pour that in the glass. That's a 25 mil there. It's a bit more than 25. I'm pretty sure they overfill these a little bit. I'm not complaining. Well, it's not 8 p.m., Jesse. I know. I got I got the times confused. I'm really sorry. Um, you can enjoy this now if you want, Jesse, or you can, you can watch this later. Um, well, you're watching it now or oh, and watch it later. Ooh, that's spooky. Now I've got, there's three, uh, there's, there's these whiskeys from the pack that I haven't got around to opening yet. And that's what tonight was all about is opening and discussing a few of them a little bit here and there. Uh, I'm going to pour actually more than just, I'm going to pour the other one as well. Now, how many, I've got the other one that I was going to pour, which is right here in my hand, which was, I think the, the fifth. Or well, the fourth day. I think this was supposed to be the Friday's one. Uh, 115.17. And that's a 30-year-old, a 30-year-old light and delicate single cask whiskey. How many whiskey advent calendars do you know just have like a, a single cask 30-year-old whiskey in it? Distilled 1990, February 1990. So bottled this year from a refill ex-bourbon barrel, Speyside. 43.2%. How exciting is that? How exciting is that? I'm going to open that. Oh, there you go. Don't spill it. Oh, there you go. Uh, I'm going to pour that. I'm going to just pour a little bit of that. Oh, it's only, it's only 20 mils-ish. 30 mils-ish. Anyway, now I've got here a 30-year-old single cask, which was in the pack. I think that's worth the pack alone. I'm being honest. Like, to be able to get the diversity of whiskeys that you get out of... Uh, out of the society and being able to actually taste them and nose them and have that sort of range from I've got an eight-year-old oily and coastal and a 30-year-old light and delicate. Now, I'm going to taste the light and delicate first. I've poured both. I think that'll do me for now. There's a couple of others in here, like the um, Nobody Expects the Spanish Inquisition, exclamation mark, which is a 73.116. And I've got a 89.12. Maturity is more than a number. I might finish with that one. That's going to be really interesting. That's going to be a weird one, I think. And 35.260 after the sugar rush. You know what? I think I'm going to start with... I think I'm going to start with... Um, yeah, I'll start with this one because it's it's an important... I've dropped the cap. Um, it's an important one to go, wow. And that is wow indeed. 
43.2%. So very much probably a good one to start on because it's so delicate. So I want to talk about the order you do this in, actually. If you're starting with something light and delicate that your palate will appreciate, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, start on the light and delicate end. Start with the lower proof spirits wherever possible. Uh, if you go into tasting two, three, four, five whiskeys, uh, you've sort of like, that's it. Like, uh, if you start with a 66, 68% whiskey, you're going to miss out. I think I think your palate's going to miss a lot of the, the nuance, a lot of the smaller detail that you get out of some older whiskeys. And in this case, a 30-year-old whiskey. I don't anticipate um, actually finishing this during this stream because I want to take my time with this. It's not a it's not a particularly attractive distillery. I'll just show you a photo of it now. There it is. There's our 115. And it's also worth noting, actually. I just want to make I just want to make a note here. This uh is the 17th, as you can see from the title there. This is the 17th cask the society has ever bottled from this distillery. That's how few it is. So the 115th distillery to join the society. So relatively speaking, a fairly late code. But this distillery does not bottle whiskey generally, I don't think. Maybe one or two here or there. And every time I say that, someone's going to go, yeah, what about, you know, what about uh, some flora and fauna release? Well, th this distillery doesn't apply because it's not a Diageo distillery, but it is, um, it is, uh, however, it, it is an interesting distillery and it's off often, especially with a bit of age, like this one is this 30-year-old, uh, it gets a very, shall I say, delightful, very much like soft tropical fruit notes straight away on the nose. There's a dusty bookshelf in the corner, but that's not the main attraction here. It's called uh, Flower Meadows and Lemon Groves. I do get a floral note straight away, but you often do out of this spirit. Uh, and this spirit uh, is a, a very, uh, usually their spirit is quite, um, their young spirit's quite uh, worm tubby, quite meaty, quite um, very like delightful spirit character. Not everyone likes this kind of whiskey, though, from this distillery, and I know that. Uh, <laughs> Jesse Morgan asks, uh, I struggle with whiskey calendars as December temps tends to be a very busy work-wise uh, report writing. Woo! Anyone else have this problem? Jesse, I, I know what you mean. In fact, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm playing catch-up at this point. This is Friday's dram, and it's Tuesday night. So I really would have, um, uh, I really would have, you know, like to do one every night, but some nights you don't get the chance. You're drowning with something else. Uh, some nights you don't have anything to drink, which is healthy. And other nights you just go, oh, wow, I'm three or four, five, six days out. So I'm taking a bit of time to go back in time now for these next few whiskeys. Just like this whiskey. So distilled 1990, bottled 2020. It's a 30-year-old single cask whiskey called Flower Meadows and Lemon Groves. I, I showed that on the screen just before. I'll show it again. There it is. Uh, and that's the distillery I've just shown up on the screen here. Um, I'd say it's a fairly attractive distillery. If we're, if we're rating distillery attractiveness, I think that one's up there. Um, the stills aren't anything special. I mean, they are. They, they produce this amazing whiskey. But they're sort of, you know, they're in a, a normal-looking room with very straight-looking sort of line arms. And quite, I guess like you could say it's a fairly, um, fairly narrow neck and a fairly bulbous bottom. So you've got sort of a, that's going to impart a particular character to the spirit which it often does. And um, that, that next slide, that's not the, that's not the story we're talking about. So I'll just run back to this one for a moment, but it is, it's quite a, um, you know, it's, it's one of the distilleries that, like I said, does not market a single malt under the distillery's name. They market a single malt called Anok. And in case you want to know how that was said, it's, uh, it's spelled A-N-C-N-O-C. So you'd be, I think you'd be, you'd be forgiven for thinking as a, as an, as a beginner, as a newcomer, you could be forgiven, forgiven for thinking it's pronounced Anknock. It's not. It's just Anok. So, and you can. It's much easier to say it the the, the right way. Anyway, um, Darren says uh, we grabbed two of the chalk tasting packs for Friday. It was amazing to go back a second time to try all those whiskies again without the chocolate. Uh, we had them all in the tasting. <laughs> yeah, it's, that those, those chocolate packs were unbelievable. Uh, the flavors that he was talking about and how they came about at different points in the whiskey and at different points in the evening uh, was unbelievable. I still can't get over it. I still cannot get over how, um, how accurate his tasting notes were and his pairing work there was. 
He's a he is truly the mad scientist of chocolate in Australia right now. So um, if you if you do like if you liked what you tasted at, at the, that evening, uh, I recommend supporting him. If he's got a few things on his site often here and there, he makes some amazing chocolate. He's truly a, a like I say a proper mad scientist of chocolate. And if you liked any of those whiskies, we did pop a few up on the website on the Friday. I think the ten has sold out. Uh, I think there's a few others maybe available. I'm not sure. I haven't checked this afternoon. Uh, but there might be. But anyway, they were lovely. They were just so good. And so glad I'm so glad you enjoyed that, Darren. And big shout out to Darren and Carla. And good big shout out to all the members who joined in on Friday because it was an awesome uh, evening of uh, of um, of whiskey and uh, flavor exploration with chocolate. You're going to see a bit more of that coming into next year. Actually, we've got a few things planned up already, which are um, all part of the whole experience of what the society is about, about flavor exploration, about sharing good times with members. Uh, obviously, we're looking forward to doing a fair bit more in-person events again, which will be exciting. Uh, but, yeah, very exciting and and very um, – and you know, whole, the whole experience is, is look, shaping up to be really something. I think light and delicate is definitely the way to go for this. I've not tasted it yet, but it's very much a light and delicate old whiskey. Age in a cask, spirit in a cask, the, the longer it ages – the older the older it becomes, of course, but the the older the spirit gets, uh, it often some spirits. How do I explain this? Some whiskies uh, become more and more, uh, I guess, tannic. They become more and more thick and tannic and luscious. Sometimes to the point of detriment, where it becomes uh, overly so, and you it's you're tasting way too much cask, and it's uh, as a few of Friends and colleagues have said before, it's like licking a fence post. And we don't bottle those kind of whiskies at the Society uh, because they are flawed. They would not pass panel. Uh, we do bottle whiskies that have obviously a lot of oak influence, especially some younger ones that have had a first fill um, influence. However, uh, in this case, this has gone the other way. This has become delicate. Uh, it's become uh, just so unbelievably delicate. It's like... Uh, Whiskey porcelain in a glass. It's something else. Now that I've let it sit for a bit, I'm not going to add any water. No way. 43.2%. It doesn't need it. Just I'm just still in awe that you can get a 30-year-old single cask in the whiskey advent calendar. I had no idea. By the way, there is an Excel spreadsheet somewhere on my computer with the full list of all the whiskeys from the advent calendar in it. I have not opened that spreadsheet, and I refuse to. I don't want to know. I actually really enjoy the surprise of what's coming up. And that's why we've had, you know, five whiskeys here uh, from the last few days that are all very different, all very surprising. I've already poured the 26. Let that open up a bit. Uh, the 10 and the 93 were beautiful. The 93 is killing it in the last 12 months. Darren, Darren, don't let everyone know. Stop, stop, stop mentioning it. No, it's he's right, though. He's right. The We've been getting a string of 93s of Delicious Campbelltown whiskey, uh, funky, aromatic, uh, coastal 93s that are unbelievably um, delicious and just integrated and a taste of the land. And I think that's really something special. Uh, as I've talked about in the live streams before, if those 93s had a 27 on the bottle, they would vanish in seconds. But because they don't, they don't. And I think people miss out on those. And especially, if I'm being honest, uh, for my tastes, sort of the 11 to sort of 17-year-old 93s we've seen in the last uh, few months have been something special indeed. Uh, keep your ears peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> keep your ears open. We've got some other 93s coming through the pipeline in the next few months that are very exciting. One which is quite old, which is very, very, very exciting. Um, it was a great laugh, says James Finnegan, listening to a man so passionate about chocolate. And his excitement for the whiskey and its impact on the chocolate and the impact of the chocolate on the whiskey it was great to listen to him. Yeah, he's he's a uh, Krizna is an absolute like I say mad scientist of chocolate, and he was so good to have on on Friday. He, he was just worried we went too fast, and I, I think we went a bit quick at one point. The first couple of whiskeys we really sort of raced through because he's so excited to taste the next one. So it was sort of like okay, well it, we we slowed it down a bit, but it was it was one of those nights where I guess you live and learn, and and you could do it at your own pace, of course. That was just the the pace we did it at. Um, and it was just really great to, you know, explore those flavors and to get to share them with you. That's the most exciting part of my job. I'll, I'll be completely honest. Expense reports. They're my least favorite. Or are they my most favorite? No, they're not at all. 
I'm tasting whiskey advent calendar stuff tonight, just in case you're wondering what you're what we're doing on the stream tonight. Um, and yes, Jesse says, keep it secret, keep it safe, Darren. Yeah, keep those 93s to yourself, Darren. I, I promise you they're some of the best whiskeys I've had in the last five years have been some of the 93s we've had out this year. Uh, they're just unbelievable. And last of the summer grime was so good. Uh, yeah, it was one of those ones where I tasted it and went, it's not as it was. That it, I really loved it. It's one of those ones where I really wanted to get a bottle for myself. So I'll see how I go. Um, but this Flower Meadows and uh, uh, Lemon Groves is holding up very nicely. And I'm going to taste it now. I've been talking too much. Mm. It just dances on the tongue. Oh, that finish. It's just oodles of stately old spirit on the finish. It just keeps going. This, the length of a finish of a whiskey has no correlation to proof. I want to make that really clear. There might be some scientific link. I don't think there is, though. I've had 43% whiskeys, like in this case, 43.2% natural cask strength whiskeys like this that are soft, that are delicate, that are light, that are fluffy even kind of whiskeys like this one and the finish just goes on and on and on some whiskeys the finish like this one go for minutes longer longer go for 20 minutes sometimes you can still taste it after 20 minutes it's still tingling and the sensation is still there uh some whiskeys uh even at car strength you taste them and it's like taste boom, gone and you you miss out on, on the whole the, the full experience of the whiskey because the finish isn't delivering and that, that can happen. That can happen. Um, the pacing for the chocolate pairing was fine if you went back to sip and enjoy the drams after the first pass. Uh, Mal, you and uh, Alex are, are very adept at the first pass and coming back around. And I've seen that a few times at some of our Melbourne events. And um, as always, a big shout out to our Melbourne community, our, our Melbourne members. Uh, Sanjava to you all. We're looking forward to our next in-person events in Melbourne. You guys have had it much rougher than the rest of Australia this year. But comparatively, we've all done pretty well out of this. We've all done pretty well out of this year, I'd say. Um, well, if, we, if we're if we to compare to any other country, really, at the moment. So um, 10 points to Australia? I don't know. Anyway, um, so I appreciate that, Mal. I'm going to come back to that that 30-year-old because that's something really special I want to take my time with. I've had my first pass. It's like uh, uh, fruit tingles, uh, uh, fruit tingles on a cloud. It would be my best descriptor for it. It's unbelievable. Okay. Now, 26.149. Now, this is not a distillery that uh sorry, this is a distillery that has seen a lot of a lot of love, uh, I should say. We've talked about this distillery uh, a number of times. I'm not having much luck with my my slides here. Uh, there's some there's some Highland clearances history for you. That's one of the most hated statues in Scotland, by the way. Um uh, you know all this stuff this year about was it this year or last year about tearing down statues, and um, this this one many people want it torn down. But if only they could reach it, you can see how how big it is. I think that's a re there's a reason he's on that much of a pedestal. Like no one can tear it down. But trust me, many people would. And the Highland clearances well worth a bit of research there. Um, this this whiskey I'm trying now is of course uh, the twenty six dot one four nine. Like I said, we've had a really good um, we've had a really good string of 26s this year. And this is an oily and coastal 26. It is a coastal, it's the distillery would not, you don't normally see this kind of um, spirit in oily and coastal profile. We see a few young and sprightlies, a lot of sweet, fruity, and mellows, a couple of spicy and sweets. Um, you often get that waxy jacket note, that um, snuffed candle, uh, fresh orange. Some of the notes you often get out of this this uh, distillery, I should say, this code. I think oily and coastal in this case is correct, though. Very much so. Pardon me. Oh, wow. Where did that come from? Second Phil X bourbon barrel. Where does it get that coastal note from? This is one of the magic, all the mysteries of whiskey are things like this, where you get to taste all these aromas that surround a cask that go, where's that flavor come from? That's got a coastal finish as well. That's almost got like a finish like a 93 does or a, or a uh, 
or even a finish like a like an old 53. Wow. It's it's, it's even slightly smoky. Ever, ever, ever slow, slightly peated. It's, I'm picking up just a little bit on the on the nose of that one. That's lovely. I'm gonna hold on to a bit of that one as well. I think I'll go third one. Third one I'm gonna go with is a special shout out to our friends over at Bath Street. Now this is this was a cask 73.116. See if I can hold that up if you can see that. Uh, it's called Nobody Expects the Spanish Inquisition. It was a special label release. Uh, 38 Bath Street Members Room Exclusive 2020. Now this is an eight year old <laughs> in the deep rich and dried fruits profile at 67.5%. Uh, I'm going to pour this in a second because um, it, it's... Oh, oh. I'm going to pour this in a second because there's there's something very cool about that. There's something very cool about that proof because it's, you know, it's a crazy proof, let's be honest. So they run the stills quite slow at the distillery 73. It's a, it's a slow still run. Um, it's straight... If I'm not mistaken, or is it even slightly curved upwards line arms? No, downwards. Sorry, downwards, quite downwards line arms from these guys. Um, so, it, they, but it's a slow run still. These guys, and the shape also allows for that sort of the heavier elements to come in, come, come across. We've seen a few sherry casks from. I think this is a, this is a sherried whiskey. It's a it's a deep rich and dried fruit seventy three. So I'm going to assume it's a sherried whiskey. Uh, we've seen quite a few. Uh, sherried whiskies from Distillery 73 in the past uh, that have been really quite something else. As members who have been around for maybe five or six or more years will, will attest to some of the 73s we saw in years gone by. In fact, it was a 73.83 that was our 15th anniversary release in 2017. A fantastic second fill sherry cask that was, a 15-year-old. But this is an eight-year-old, and it's yeah, exclusive to members' rooms. What is that? <sighs> wow. That's a big whiskey. I mean, 67.5%. What did you expect? It's a big whiskey. It's a substantial whiskey, though, from 73. It's always got this sort of like... Uh, it's, it's often got that, like I say, he it's a heavy spirit. It's part of the... Um, these days, it's part of the Bacardi group. Uh, and so a lot of it has been used in the past for blends, uh, used for, I'm using the wrong slide again, I don't know, look at this, nope, nope, let's try again, nope, wrong, wrong one again, nope, nope, that's not the right one either, maybe it didn't bring a slide, look, like I said, it's, it's a big, um, yeah, make sure the glass doesn't melt, yeah, that's something else. Oh, I love the Bath Street one, Hems, mate, Hems, you asked some ripper questions at our, um, on the chocolate night, and some ripper comments came from you, if I recall correctly. Thank you so much for um, joining in. What a what a great night that was. Thank you so much. Um, make sure the glass doesn't melt down. I tell you what, this whiskey could probably leach out of this glass at this point. Sixty seven point five is is just rip snorter, especially for something that's already eight years of age. I've seen those kind of proofs before on three, four, five year old spirit, but an eight year old to be still sitting at sixty seven point five means it's a tight cask. And it's a sherry butt that's held up very nice, or sherry hogshead, I'm not sure. That's a heavy nose as well. Very, um, it's spirit forward, of course, but it's almost like uh, like grape notes, fresh red grapes. Barley sugar, really strong barley sugar. It's going to need a drop of water or two, this one. Pressed wine juice. Almost a rum note as well, almost like a rummy note. Like an overproof rum, like an Aussie rum. Wow, there's a lot going, there's a lot to unpack there. So even side by side, I've got one whiskey, which is 43.2% and is a delicate old space cider, a beautiful 30-year-old whiskey compared to an absolute rip snorter of an eight-year-old sherried whiskey. So the Variation of flavors in our advent pack calendar is nothing short of phenomenal. I'm going to get on to enjoying these and, um, and, and just, um, I hope to see you all again soon if this 67.5 one doesn't wipe me out. Like I said, I'm not going to get to all five tonight. These three are well and truly enough for me. 
and I um, appreciate you all tuning in and watching our live streams. We like to go live almost every day because it means that we can share good whiskey, share good experiences, have a chat, bring you in on the conversation, and sometimes talk about particular whiskeys or like this advent calendar. Other times talk more about, I guess, uh, the wider world of whiskey, of enjoyment, of learning, of entertainment, and all the things that goes along with that. And we're really looking forward to, we've just been doing a lot, last few days, we've been doing a lot of planning, a lot of uh, development and planning into what's happening at the society in 2021. And of course, we're very, very excited to take, to share that adventure with you all. And um, we hope to see you all, of course, next year into a fantastic year ahead of uh, what the society is uh, gearing up to do. And for those who are just joining in now, and I can see quite a few numbers increasing, uh, I do apologize. We went a bit early. We were supposed to go live at 8. We went live at about 7.35. So you can always watch this on repeat on YouTube, on Facebook, our Facebook group, our Facebook page. And of course, we love you joining us on this journey into great spirits. Our, the bookings for Sydney Whiskey Party have now closed so that we can ensure the catering and everything for everyone. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. There is a slight forecast of zero to one millimeter of rain. Fingers crossed we do okay. We do have a shade with the um, the pavilion, uh, but we are hoping that we, we don't have to um, all huddle under that. Uh, and of course, that would be, we'll still enjoy a dram, don't worry. In the meantime, I'll see you for our next live, which will be announced on the page and on Facebook and on YouTube soon. And, and in the meantime, you have a great week and slanjava. That normally works much better. <laughs>